We want to welcome everyone to our forum round one. We are very fortunate to have Emily Sharp from Kiwanis International, our area director with us to this morning to talk about getting your club mojo back and hoping to motivate and value your members in your club. We hope to, um, you enjoy her presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to put in the chat and we will um, work to get that answered when Emily is completed her uh, presentation. And if you would like to ask Emily a question, also raise your hand and we will um, acknowledge you. Okay, take it away, Emily. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. And hi, everyone. Good morning. It has been a great morning so far. Uh, first off, props to Pennsylvania for making your mid-year happen um, via Zoom, because I know this is not an easy task, but y'all are doing it and you're making it happen. And I'm so glad to be a part of it. So thank you for allowing me to be here with you this morning. Today, we're going to talk about motivation, folks. Um, we're going to talk about specifically not only what motivation is, um, but we're going to talk about how to find it, how to harvest it, and how to share that motivation with the members you work with. Um, like Sarah mentioned, my name is Emily Sharp. I am um, an area director on staff, so I'm really fortunate to get to work with the Pennsylvania District, and um, I'm telling you, y'all are killing it. So I'm really thankful to be here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. On the screen, um, you will see, um, I wanna talk about the definition of motivation because before we can even talk about what it is, we need to, to define it. So I Googled a couple of different um, definitions of it and here's what I found. The definition of motivation is the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. And then another one that I found that I really liked was the general desire or willingness of someone to do something. So keeping that in mind, I also want you to know there are so many different types of motivation. So let's talk about a, an example really quick. Uh, the example of exercising, if you will. Um, I personally try to exercise three to four times a week for so many reasons. Um, I really like walking, so I do it because I like it. I really love some Zumba classes, um, some you know Pilates classes that I do. And overall, I try to exercise three to four times a week because I know it's good for my health. These are all examples of intrinsic motivation. It's really because I want to do it and I want to know or I get the, the purpose behind it. I also try to exercise three or four times a week because I'm getting married in October and I really want to look really great in my wedding dress. So that is what we call an extrinsic type of motivation. It is really the, the, the benefits that we have really for, for myself and that I want to see. So there's a difference between intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. So I want to give you a little bit of the science behind motivation too. And we're going to talk about this and I'm going to give you some examples. And then we're going to talk about this as a, as a group because I really think that I could come up here and, and talk all day because I'm really passionate about this, but I think we learn best from each other. So I really want that peer-to-peer -peer interaction too. So going back to the science, um, when it comes to motivation, as humans, we all have some, um, you know, our motives are biological and some have personal and social origins too. So for example, uh, many of you have probably heard at some point in our life, um, this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You can see I have on the screen this pyramid and it really kind of explains what our needs are as human beings. On the bottom, you can really see our basic needs come first. So you can see we really need as humans, food, water, rest, even though we might not get that sometimes, follow closely by security and safety. These are really our human needs, right? We as human need these. After that, you can see, um, you know, with our human needs, we don't really need a lot of motivation to want water because that's what we need to live, right? We don't need a lot of motivation for to want safety and security, right? And as you continue to go up through the pyramid, you can see that our needs of wanting relationships, feeling accomplishment, and then even self-fulfillment, right? Um, our motivations change to want those things more in life because again, as humans, 
We don't want the same things over and over again. We crave change, even if we have those basic needs, right? So I, um, along with science comes study after study after study of what companies have done about us as consumers to try and buy their products. So a few months ago, I was reading this really great book. Um, it was called Marketing to Mind States by Will Leach. And I saw an article online about this book and it really put some um, interesting thoughts in my mind that I really wanted to share with you that I think are relevant to the conversation of motivation that we're talking about today. So the article talks about the fact that if a company can figure out what motivates their consumers, you can market your brand to them on a completely deeper level. Let me say that again. If a company can kind of figure out what motivates you, then they can market you um, specifically on a deeper level. So here are a few examples that really stuck out to me, and I think they'll be relative to you as well. So the first one that we have is achievement. A really good example of motivation when it comes to achievement is Nike. And the article goes on to say that Nike with their famous slogan, just do it, really makes you think that whatever it is you want to achieve, we can do it together. It is simple, it is powerful, and it makes you have that we can help you get there experience and mindset. So achievement, and Nike really go hand in hand and to get that motivation of achievement across. The next one is the, the concept of belonging. What does belonging and motivation have together? Well, the example they used in this article, again, was Harley Davidson. This company does a really good job of evoking that idea that when you have a Harley, you belong and you are part of a really tight knit family. It's a really similar concept with CrossFit or with professional or college sports. You know, as a, as a Tennessee volunteer fan myself, when I put on that beautiful Tennessee orange um, sweatshirt that I have and I love, I immediately feel part of the team and I feel like I'm a part of that bigger purpose, right? I have a common tribe uh, that I love and that I support and it just makes me feel part of that family. So that belonging con concept really helps motivate me. The next one I wanna talk about is competence. So we all know um, that we have been working on, like we, we're in quarantine, right? In different parts of the country, it may look different, different parts of the world rather, um, but we all have those projects that we've probably wanted, wanting, we have wanted to be doing because we're in quarantine, right? Those house projects. Um, so when you think about competence, um, you think about being capable, qualified, prepared, and skilled, right? So specifically Home Depot really resonates with me because you walk into Home Depot uh, with all these home improvement ideas and you're looking for motivation for tools and resources to feel more capable so that when I'm ready to paint the walls that I've been wanting to paint in my house forever, I'm gonna feel much more confident and ready to begin that project. So competence comes with motivation in this example with Home Depot. The next concept I want you to think about is engagement. What do I mean by engagement? Well, specifically, you might think of Disney World. I think it's the best example because you are literally engaged uh, with Disney from the minute you begin to purchase your tickets to the time you check into your hotel, from the moment you enter the park, with every turn you take, you are enjoying their magical experience, right? Disney on a whole new level, they work to really engage you and that is what is at the, the core of their being. I also think when it comes to engagement, nostalgia plays a little bit into that as well to really help with those motivations. And then the last two, esteem really plays a part of motivation. What do I mean by that? You know, there are some luxury brands, if you will, maybe you think of Lexus or BMW or Chanel, but I personally like to think of social media. So on social media, think about your Facebook account. When you get that like on social media, it instantly gives us that feel good feeling, right? It makes us know that others like it, they're engaging with us, and it just gives us that little boost of esteem that we need after someone engages with us on social media. 
And then finally, the concept of security. There are a ton of different um, security companies out there, right? So we'll, we will use ADT as a part of the example that was used in the book. Um, but security brands such as ADT make your home feel safe from outside threats. Your motivation to keep your family, yourself, your pets, uh, your, you know, anyone else safe and secure, put companies such as this one really top at mind. So you can see we have all different types of motivation. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, when it comes to th these different types of, of motivations that I just shared with you, I believe that you can use these same tactics to motivate the members in your clubs to achieve the mission of Kiwanis. Now, let's do a quick reminder. We are probably all familiar with the mission of Kiwanis, but let's review, okay? The mission of Kiwanis International is to serve the children of the world one child and one community at a time. You know, and if you ask me, there's no other mission statement better than that one, right? And that's pretty much, that's why we're here is to help the children of the world and our communities. So my question for you is very simple, okay? Are you with me? What uh, was your motivation for joining Kiwanis? Why are you here today? You know, why are you a leader? Or for those of you who maybe aren't a leader, you might be um, a future leader because you will be voluntold to do something in the future maybe. But why do you care about helping children and making a difference in your community? Think about that for a second. We're gonna talk about it. So over the past few years, I have asked the people that I've worked with, whether it has been on the road, whether it has been on a phone call, whether it's in emails, um, why, like, what is their motivation to, to volunteer with Kiwanis? And, and I've kept it all in a little notebook. And you can see in my notebook, I have pages and pages of reasons why um, people have told me that they volunteer. So I really want to share some of those with you today and talk about what, what they mean and why they're important, okay? So some of the few that really stuck out to me were, um, they want to contribute to a cause in which they really believe in. Next, they wanted to learn a new skill. Next, they were motivated to volunteer because they wanna have a sense of ownership over something, over the situation that they can control, that they can participate in and fix, if you will. They may have a desire for change. A lot of the people told me that they wanted to have fun. And also another really popular answer was their, their motivation for volunteering was because they wanted to meet people. A few individuals said they were personally asked by someone, which is why they volunteered. Some are a part of an organization uh, with which they are affiliated with. So that's why they're participating. And then the other enjoy the type of work that's being done. They really thrive on whatever it was that they were asked to do. There were a very, uh, you know, various other reasons why uh, people told me, but these really captured all of them in my opinion. And if you think about it, most of these answers are, are motivations that are tied to emotions, okay? Like these answers pull at your heartstrings. They have an emotional attachment to it. They go back to our human needs. Remember the, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? They, it goes back to, we have the desire as humans to want relationships, to want achievements, so on and et cetera, right? So how do we take these emotions and harvest them to help accomplish the goal of our organization? Well, you know what? I'm glad you asked because we're going to talk about that next. So here are a few different ways that I think are the best ways to motivate volunteers, okay? So uh, the first one being know their reasons for volunteering, right? It sounds super simple, and let me tell you, it is super simple. If you know what someone's reason is for volunteering, you should talk about it and keep talking about it. These are things that are naturally motivate us, right? 
find out what those reasons are and keep them at the forefront of your conversations. Number two, the easiest way of keeping up with members' motivations are through communications. This helps us manage expectations and the responsibilities of our work. It's also a good idea to welcome um, suggestions and feedback because it shows people it shows people that their opinion matters and that um, they are willing to do the best work that they can if you show them that they matter. The next one I want to talk about is playing to pe no, I'm sorry, is valuing people's time. Okay. You, me, Sarah, Don, everybody, we're all busy, right? Um, when you value people's time, people volunteer because they want to make a difference in the world, right? Like that's why you're probably here. You want to make a difference. But people have busy lives and competing responsibilities, right? Like I'm trying to decide when am I going to do my laundry and when am I going to meal prep and when am I going to go buy my groceries, let alone work and socialize and take care of myself. So if they don't feel like they are making a difference, they won't want to continue sharing their time and their energy. But we, we shut down if we think we're better off doing something else. So really value people's time is something I want you to keep in mind. Number four, play to their strengths. The members in your club all have strengths. And what I want you to think about and what I think is important is the ones that the members self-identify are more important, not what you have identified for, for them. So for example, I see all the time, maybe someone in marketing will join a club and the club automatically thinks, oh, we would love for you to do our social media or PR, which is great if that's what they want to. But what if that person you know, does that all day long and they don't want to do that in their volunteer life. Maybe they're really passionate about finances and they want to be your club's treasurer. Or maybe they want to focus on recruitment. So let them self-identify. Here are some skill sets um, and really respect th their uniqueness that they bring to the table because everyone in our clubs are unique. And then lastly, I think it's so easy and important. And one of the best ways to motivate our volunteers is to say thank you, show your appreciation, thank them, and then thank them again. Share how you are making a difference um, and do it socially. So for example, I have seen several clubs, especially throughout this uh, Zoom world that we are living in these days, record a message about um, someone in their club, why they're thankful for them, or after a big project, why they are so thankful for a project that they have done, and then play that during a meeting. So think if you were all able to uh, record a 10 second video thanking them or thanking someone in your club, you can put all those together and you can ask you know, the, the young people in, in your community, whether that's a key club, a Circle K member, whatever, maybe you have those skills yourself too, and put that together and play it during a meeting. And then send handwritten notes. Those are some of my favorite things to do. And I know it's important to you too, to receive and, uh, to receive and send these handwritten notes because you do, and I get them. And that really means a lot to me. So I have done a lot of talking and in our last um, and in our minutes together, the remaining minutes together, here's what I want to do. I want to know and please put your thoughts in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand if you want to participate. What motivated you to join Kiwanis? What has motivated you to stay? Let's start with those questions. What are your thoughts? Okay, great. No one is motivated and no one loves Kiwanis. Great. We're doing good, people. Okay. <laughs> Megan, do you have your hand raised? Are you wanting to raise your hand? <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Okay. I was like, oh, I wasn't sure if I could like get to the raise hand feature in there. <laughs> um, I have been motivated uh, to, well, I joined Kiwanis. Like I was in Key Club. So mm -hmm. Uh, you know, had that my uh, key club advisor, you know, stayed on top of me and was like, hey, when I was in college, come back and help us with this. And she really encouraged me to keep with it. 
and it's also been a family uh, affair that my family's always volunteered in some capacity. So that's, you know, been important to me. And, you know, now I'm just trying to, you know, find some new ways to, you know, keep serving, uh, you know, our community, our clubs kind of, you know, hasn't done a whole lot that, with the pandemic and mm-hmm. trying to find some new ways. How can we, you know, approach 2021 and, you know, still do some of the good things uh, to help our community. So just trying to learn some new ideas today. That is great. Thank you for sharing, Megan. You know what? It's one of those things I personally, um, I wish I could take everything and do it or not. So that's the thing I will tell you not to do. Um, Try a one step at a time, one idea, and then go from there. And if it doesn't work, try something else or incorporate it or, or change it one step at a time. Who else? Who else um, wants to share? What are their reasons for joining Kiwanis? And what's motivated you to stay? Sarah, I don't have the chat pulled up. I don't know if there's anything in the chat. No, I don't see a chat. Um, Nothing in chat. Oh, well, hold on. Yes. can you see the chat? I cannot. Oh, hmm. all right. It says uh, we have one Val Rose. She was asked to join by a school official and was flattered that she wanted uh, me to join. Um, another person helping children. I have learned so much about early education intervention through my involvement with Qantas and that is what motivates me to stay involved. The work we do for children. Uh, I have Lisa Chessa. I joined Kiwanis because I like to volunteer and do service projects. I want to get more involved in the community. Our club is newer club and I was encouraged to join by some of my children's teachers. Mm -hmm. Doug says special needs Christmas party held by his club, motivate him to join. So, Okay, so I see my chat now. Those are all great. Thank you for those who are sharing. so I have several people who said, uh, one, one person said wanted to support Circle K. I love that. Someone else said, I was asked as an educator, I have an interest in the well-being of children. Now that I'm retired, it's a natural fit, right? Uh, someone said, I was asked to join and then I was motivated to participate. I love that. That's so good. So here's my next question for y'all and please continue to um, use the chat feature. Here's, here's my question, okay? Has that motivation changed? Did you join for one reason and now your motivation has changed? Because I see that a lot. I see that a lot of times people um, join because someone asked them to and they you know, participated in a service project. And then they have their, you know, quote unquote, Kiwanis moment where they really connected with somebody at a service project and that's why they've stayed. My next question for you is, How do you motivate the members in your club? Or do you? (laughs) What motivation techniques have you heard? Because again, I can sit here and I can give you a thousand more ideas, but I think that peer-to-peer interaction of what's working with your club is what we all need to hear right now. So what has been working for you? How are you motivating your friends? If anyone wants to unmute, that'd be really good. Um, Well, they got to raise their hand and then I'll unmute them, so. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's see. Megan raised her hand, great. Okay, I'll ask her to unmute. Go ahead, Megan. Okay, I'll share again. I put it in the chat too, but probably one of my you know, things that changed was getting involved with key leader, Mm -hmm. attending those, you know, weekend uh, events and seeing, you know, the future leaders just really come alive. And I try to share that with other Kiwanians and, you know, at my club, I've given presentations and try to support those causes because it is just such an amazing experience to see you know, young people, you know, sometimes some of them start off shy and they're like, I don't know about this, but then, you know, they blossom and that, that seed is planted of service. And it's such a cool 
uh, experience for them. And, you know, and then I try to tell like, Hey guys, like th this whole, you know, key leader thing is great and you should, you know, get involved with it. So, uh, I try to share that as a way to, you know, say like, this is what we do. We're helping, uh, you know, students gain those necessary skills. So that's one thing that I've really enjoyed over the years. I love that. That is great. Thank you for sharing. We have, uh, from my participant now, uh, from Sheridan, I think that's Marianne. Hi, Emily. Um, I joined Kiwanis in 2005 because somebody embarrassed me and asked me the question, why aren't you in Kiwanis? <laughs> and, I didn't, and I didn't have any good answer. And so that's how I became involved with it. But um, as I became more engaged with the different projects that our club had, I saw the need for what we do and the appreciation from the parents and the children in our community, which made our club even stronger and better and more uh, desired to engage in more activities for them. And so um, that's kind of changed the focus then of not being bar embarrassed to join the club, but seeing the actual need and appreciation. I love that. See, your motivation changed. Thank you so much for sharing. You joined because someone asked you to and you have stayed and your motivation has changed because you see the need and you want to make a difference. I love that. Thank you for sharing. We have uh, Frank Magacelli from Kiwanis Club of Media for you, Emily. Great. Hi, Emily. It's really Bonnie. Oh, hey, Bonnie. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Um, Frank and I are the, the president and vice president of a new club here in media. And um, I'm going to be honest, we, we do not know how to mo motivate our members. We're both ready to leave. Mm -hmm. um, we are a brand new club. We've been around for a year and a little bit. Um, I've been running back and forth between your presentation and how to make a virtual meeting exciting. So that has helped. But we have communicated with our members. Um, we've done projects. We've tried to make it fun. I did a survey when I came on board as president to find out, you know, why people joined. Everybody's blaming everything on COVID, but I, that's a big deal. And I understand that. But I also think that there's something else. And I'm just looking for specific things. We had three or four new members join because they had free dues and they're gone. They came to one meeting and they're gone. Um, we haven't heard from them. So anything that you can help me and Frank become unfrustrated <laughs> with. And like I said, I did see your slide with the five points and we're doing uh, most of those or, or for the most part, most of them. Um, what else can we do? I, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Yeah. Hey, I, well, first of all, thank you for sharing your frustrations. Uh, if, if everyone wasn't frustrated at some point, then we're not doing it right. Um, mm -hmm. And I hear what you're saying. And I would love to connect with you afterwards, uh, after this or at some point soon, so that we can really tailor some ideas to your, um, to your club to make some mm -hmm. things happen. Um, and I think, again, you're doing what's right of like really asking the members, hey, what are you, what are you wanting? And everybody has a different reason for their why. So I think that that is something that um, it's going to be ebbs and flows. So take that for, for what it is. But I think that if we can identify, here's what we want to do and go from there, that's really what the motivation factor is, because we don't do things that we don't want to do, or we're not going to do them well. So well, and, and, and we have done that, and I don't want to take up everyone's time. I'll just say this, and then I'll stop, and you and I can talk later. But, you know, we've asked, we, we've had specific projects, um, and, you know, people say, oh, yeah, I'll help with the um, pajama drive, and then, whoop, they're gone, and Frank and I end up doing it. Um, we can't get, we couldn't even get anybody interested in a quizzo night. Um, it, it, I, I don't know what else to do. So I guess you and I need to talk afterwards, but thank you. Yes, absolutely. We will connect and I, we can brainstorm some ideas together and, and see what happens. Thank right. You. And Sarah has been helpful. She's, she has, you know, given us ideas and suggestions, but I, I don't know whether. 
Well, the last thing that I will say before we move on is I want you to know that you're not the only person in that situation. I'm sure there are several other people on this call specifically that are feeling similar feelings, but also that is something that um, it, you're, you're not alone in. So, so take care with that. You're, you're not alone in this. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Walt Howe. Yeah, hi, Emily. Hi. Uh, the, to response to uh, has that motivation changed? I would have to say this year in particular, it has for many years. I've been the uh, Kiwanis advisors for five of the uh, SLPs that our club sponsored. And because of the COVID, why uh, we've had hybrid learning in these schools and we haven't been able to have our 4K kids and our One Builders Club programs active because the students are going to schools or being on computer learning at different times. One of the things I uh, put out to our, our faculty advisors was uh, something I thought that, that might uh, be of interest to, the, to any of the students was a uh, pen pal program. So uh, I, got, uh, I got one of the schools and it wasn't even one of our former faculty advisors. It was one of the um, staff that that's uh, in our, a program called Communities in Schools in one of our elementary schools who like the idea because they're an activities coordinator. So it's kind of going along step by step, but, but it was something interesting to them because the, the youngsters are spending so much time on their computers mm -hmm. that they thought it would be really interesting if they had to do something with uh, pencil and paper, so to speak, and uh, get writing to uh, uh, other other students or or other youngsters. So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's in the early stages now, but it uh, it's it's moving along, and and that's something that kind of uh, an idea that motivated me to try to get uh, students uh, involved in a way different than being on a computer all the time. That's a great idea. And I love that you're sharing it because like I said earlier, people naturally crave change and they want to do the, they don't want to do the same thing over again. And let's all be real. Zoom burnout is a real thing, right? Like it is real. So I love that you're, that you're encouraging them to do something different and you'll have to keep us posted on how that um, evolves and, and what you think of it. Thank you for sharing. Um, Sarah, I think we have time for, for one more person. Is that right? Yep. Let me look. We have Lisa Jessa. Hi. Um, I just wanted to mention that someone else had said that they're, they have a newer club and it's struggling a little bit. Our club, which is Back Mountain Kiwanis, I think we're only like two years old, maybe three. But um, we have actually, I think since October, have gotten four or five new people to join. And they have actually stayed active and are actually starting with new things. So I just wanted to offer a word of encouragement for that is just keep trying new things. Um, even if an idea sounds like it might not work or sounds silly, um, try it out. We tried um, a winter art contest for the kids in our area right now we've only gotten like 10 entries, but um, it didn't cost the kids anything to enter, but they have the potential to win a gift card mm -hmm. for it. Um, just keep trying things that will engage your community. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like it, the art contest doesn't sound like it's a service project, but it does engage the kids and it does help motivate them. Mm -hmm. um, we encouraged, uh, because we have a K-Kids club um, through our elementary school, we, and we have had a lot of snow in our area, we encourage the kids to go and shovel their neighbor's sidewalks, mm -hmm. um, you know, just different things. And then we were talking about it at our last meeting, like, um, why don't we go and help our neighbor shovel? Like, those are still considered, like, service things, even though that's something you might normally do. Mm -hmm. Like, let's make this a group effort and on Saturday, go around and help shovel. Um, 
and we were just talking about, oh, we're going to build a snowman and put our Kiwana stuff on our snowman because, Mm -hmm. you know, so we were just trying to get into like the group spirit. And so our meetings have been a little more engaging for that. And um, we did go through a slump. Um, The fundraising that we've been doing, we haven't thrown anything out. If somebody comes up with a fundraising idea, we, um, you know, we're tempting it because nothing is a lost cause at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to tackle it, go for it. Um, So just don't shoot down ideas and um, we're in a weird time right now. So just kind of try everything out. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that encouraged, encouraged me. And I know that that encouraged other people on the call as well. Um, friends, like I said, I could go on and on, but, um, I think we are close to, to, to our time limit. So, uh, what I will leave you with is one of my, uh, favorite quotes I will put on the screen from our friend, um, Steve Jobs. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. Um, I know that you had a choice of participating today um, and then specifically participating in this workshop. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for um, um, hanging out with me this morning. And um, I hope you've learned a little bit about motivation and some ideas to take back with you. Uh, I will make sure that Sarah has my slides, um, but also that... um, I I will compile the ideas that we've gathered today. And I have some of my own ideas that we will put in a document so that you can then um, refer to the document and um, have some tips and tricks that you can try on your own. So again, thank you so much for for hanging out with me today. Um, Great job to the Pennsylvania Kiwanis District for what you're doing. You're making a difference and I really appreciate it.